my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Hello everybody, welcome back to the quick take and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Now, in episode two of the long take, I went into detail on Chelsea's breakthrough in negotiations and the apparent agreed deal with Manuel Lugarte and Sporting. Since then, since then, things have changed a little bit. Chelsea are pulling out of the Manuel Lugarte race. PSG are now in the lead to sign the player. This is from Fabrizio Romano 16 hours ago. Player was open to Chelsea move, but PSG have offered more and Chelsea are not willing to pay well above what they consider Lugarte's market rate. PSG know they've a match point now with Manuel Lugarte deal as personal terms have been agreed after salary improved last night. Talks on going with Sporting to complete the deal. P uh, Chelsea has still no intention to match the new conditions offered by PSG. Apparently, PSG are offering 200000 a week. I don't know how credible that is. If, that is. if that's what they're doing, then that is ridiculous. I think we ended up offering him some around, something around the 70 million, uh, se not 70, 70,000 a week, which is still quite good for a player of his age and around, roughly around the area where I said, you know, what wages we should offer him in the rebuild video. But if PSG are offering close to 200000 what do you want me to do? What do you want us to do? We can't, we can't do, we can't do that. You know, with FFP looming and we're trying to reduce the wage, but we can't offer Manuel Lugarte, a 22 year old player who's in all honesty, hasn't played in the Premier League. And so I know that whole Premier League proven thing is annoying, but at the end of the day, we can't just offer him 200,000 a week. Yes, we paid quite a lot for Mudrick, but Mudrick's on 50,000 a week. Enzo Fernandez is, is an exception. Enzo Fernandez is a World Cup winner. I swear, he was, I swear he won the Young Player of the Tournament Award. He is unreal. And he's been unreal for us. So that's why he's on a lot of money. We can't just hand out 200,000 a week contracts to anyone. And he was perfect. He was the perfect partner for Enzo Fernandez in that 4-2-3-1 double pivot. I saw um, Euro, uh, Euro Expert put out a video just kind of going through the ins and outs of Manuel Ugarte as a player. And it just backed up what I believed. And he is a fantastic player. And... I hope he rots at PSG. I oh, seriously, serious, this is. Oh, oh yeah, here we go. <clears throat> so, man with regards to PSG, here we go. Understand the player is already in Paris, set for medical. He will sign the contract today. PSG will pay 60 million euros to Sporting. Chelsea left the race 12 hours ago, and Ugarte will join PSG as Campos closed the negotiations. Ugarte and Asensio. That is just sad, man. I swear we had we had a medical, a booked in for like tomorrow as well for him, and then just PSG come in with that absolute mad offer. I wasn't able to see it i was out uh, enjoying my birthday i was out on the beach with no signal having laughs making burgers uh, making memories basically and then i come back into an area with their signal i check my phone and i see the news and i was just stunned I, I i couldn't believe what i was looking at i made a big point in my uh long video uh, the long take episode two about how important this deal is not just for the player but for Chelsea's transfer window as a whole, that the fact that we're getting a deal and a player like Manuel Ugarte in very early and in such a methodical and ergonomic manner, it set a precedent for how we were going to act within the, within the summer transfer window and how deals are going to be done. The fact that Pochettino was a massive admirer of Ugarte and was really the one that was striving this deal forward and the fact that we've now failed to sign him it spells a lot of not good feelings going into this window. I'm going to tell you that right now. Getting a, getting a player like Manuel Garte done early would have been brilliant. But here we are. We've now lost out on him. Mason Mount's going to leave. Pochettino wants him out to stay. You know, we are selling players like Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz, Pochettino, he didn't really... He had him in his plans, but at the same time, he wasn't really that fussed if, if, if he left. But here we are. And uh, Kai Havertz is obviously going off to Real Madrid for around 55, 60 million, which... Is all right. I mean, I think similar to what I think I said in the video, 60 million for Kai Havertz and then 65 million for Mason Mount, something in that range. Again, I put that out that video about a week ago now, over a week ago. So I might be misremem misremembering some stuff, but Ugarte will sign until June 2028. That is from Fabrizio Romano an hour ago. <sighs> that this, leave us, this leaves us going fully in for Moises Caicedo, who I never really thought of him as a CDM or as, or as a number six. Um, I'm not too sure how he'd work alongside Enzo Fernandez. I know he likes to kind of go into s different areas of the pitch and isn't really a sitter. Uh, not like Manuel Lugarte. And other options include, yeah, R Redondo. Sorry, not Redondo. Redondo. Federico Redondo, the Argentinian defensive midfielder who has been compared to or has been labelled as the next Sergio Busquets. 
uh, Biscuits. Uh, <laughs> I keep saying Biscuits. Sergio Biscuits. I wouldn't mind him. Uh, I know Joe Shields is an admirer of him. Just look who he's following on Instagram. Uh, but it's not Manuel Ugarte. I don't know if that means we're going to go fill in for Declan Rice now. If we're just going to do a late Trump bid of Declan Rice to try and beat you know Manchester United and Arsenal and Bayern Munich to his signature. And obviously, I'm sure Declan Rice, if you know he was given, oh, I don't know, man. See, uh, see, this this is the thing. I was about to say Declan Rice, maybe he might join, but no, we don't have any European football. Manuel Ugarte was perfect because he was still young. Well, he was younger than Declan Rice. He still had a long career ahead of him. I feel you're going to maybe call me an idiot, but I feel like we're guaranteed to reach Champions League football next season. Call me an idiot, but I think that's what's going to happen. I think we're getting top four no matter what. So for a player of his age to take just one year out of playing European football and really grow and develop alongside a young, budding, exciting squad, that's exciting. I'd be excited if I was a player to do that, especially at Chelsea, where we have a history of winning. But no, he chose PSG, and then that means we're kind of left out on a limb to try and find another defensive midfielder. And Kante's been linked away with a move. We're back in the situation we were last summer, where we're in desperate need of a, of a defensive midfielder or a midfielder, and then it wasn't until the last few days of the window when Tuchel was like, actually, no, guys, I actually need some midfield reinforcements because Billy Gilmore had gone. And then we ended up getting Zaka uh, Dennis Zakaria on loan. We can't do that again. We needed to get this Agate deal done and we've let it slip through our fingers once more. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> There's been other names linked. I know Zuba Mendy's been mentioned, but apparently he doesn't want to leave. I've mentioned Declan Rice. I've mentioned Moises Caicedo. I put out a tweet saying Redondo Hive stand up. And Felix replied to me saying, I've got my stocks in Fabricio Diaz. I haven't looked into Fabricio Diaz. I'm not too sure who he is. Apparently he's a football manager wonder kid. I don't know. I I'm lost. I'm broken. I'm hurt. I'm disappointed. And I'm worried. And I said earlier, that's two players now that Pochettino has wanted at Chelsea or wanted to stay at Chelsea, who the owners have failed to deliver on. Mason Mount and Mamo Legate. And that can't happen. That can't happen. You want to invest and you want to back a manager like Mauricio Pochettino. You don't mess up deals like this. It was so important that we got this player and we've messed it up. I've got a bad feeling about the transfer window. I was opt I was optimistic. I was really optimistic. This has put a spanner in the works. If clubs are going to... I don't know if it's like a middle finger to us for what we did in the summer and the January transfer window where other clubs are just be like, you know what? F these guys. You want that player so bad, we're going to take him for same, well, same, roughly the same amount. We're just going to put him on double wages because we can. Because we can. And we can't, we can't do that because we got to, as I said, we got to cut down the wage bill. We got to sell loads and loads. We got to play, sell 15, 20 players and we got to sell them early. So we got, we got to put our time into performing this max exodus of players before we can really move on to investing in areas like the goalkeeper, the CDM and the striker. But in that time, other clubs are going to start, you know, working on the groundwork with the players that are targets, with our targets and make it so much harder for us to get who we want and get who Mauricio Pochettino wants. I've got a bad feeling. I've got a bad feeling. And I know rival fans will be happy. I'd be happy. If Manuel Agate was linked to Arsenal and they'd been leading the race and they, were, they had the medicals booked in, they had everything agreed, there was a fee agreed, we were going to invest a little bit, they, they were going to invest a little bit into sporting. You know, everything was fine and dandy. He was a perfect partner for... I don't know who's in, who's in the midfield, Thomas Partey, but again, Thomas Partey will probably be going to prison soon, hopefully, fingers crossed. Or Xhaka, but Xhaka's leaving. Jorginho, maybe. Jorginho is a player they signed in January from us. And then the deal collapses and PSG come in. We, I'd be laughing. I'd be laughing. But we're at the expense of it now. And I'm not happy. <laughs> I really, really, really like Manuel Legate. To me, he was perfect because we weren't going to get Declan Rice. Declan Rice is off to either, as I said, Arsenal, Man United or Bayern Munich. We haven't even looked at Declan Rice. I think Declan Rice would be fantastic at Chelsea. One, he's prem proven. Two, he's a Premier League captain. Three, he was in he was in the bloody academy for God's sake. Yes, we released him, but that was an idiotic move. You may think well, with Mason Mount's leaving and obviously Declan Rice and Mason Mount, they're best friends. What does that spell for the future? True, true. But I'm sure Declan Rice would get along just as well with players like Mikhailo Mudrick and players like Enzo Fernandez and. Reese James, of course, I feel like him and Wesley Fofana would get on quite well. 
you know, as I said, this squad is quite young and so is Declan Rice, but Declan Rice is a leader. He's, I'm not going to say he's egotistical and he's, I'm not going to say he's arrogant, but I'm going to say he is confident in, in himself and his abilities. And a player like him, who's still young, but is also guided, not guided, but he's also stuck with a team that's got, got, that's got themselves to a European final in West Ham. You know, not every player can do that. And it might be a pipe dream that Declan Rice comes to Chelsea. I've liked Declan Rice and I think in my mid, perfect midfield partner for Enzo Fernandez. I had, you know, I think it, I think I had it. I was trying to remember what it was. I think it was, was it Kone, Lavia, Ugarte, then Rice in that order. I had Rice as the number one option. I think, I think <clears throat> my memory's horrendous. So I've got a terrible memory at the moment, but I don't know. I don't know where this leaves us. We are, it leaves us scrambling. That's where it leaves us. This leaves us scrambling. We're, we are in panic mode as a club. And this is the last place we want to be when we've got so much important business to be doing, as I said, in the summer. So to wrap it up, Chelsea were leading the race to sign Manuel Legate. Personal terms had been agreed. Fee was agreed. Uh, he was happy with the wages. And then PSG, out of nowhere, at midnight last night, say, you know what? We're going to offer you 200000 a week. We're going to double what we were offering you. And Legate was like, well... I'm how old am I? 22. I'm 20. I'm just, I'm, I'm in my early twenties. I can't turn down 200,000 a week, even if I want to play in the Premier League. See you later, Chelsea. I'm going to go play with the farmers. That's what it is. That's what it is. Money. Money talks. We've done it before. We know how it works. It's just that it's happened to us now. And I'm not happy about it. Oh, well, I've been the quick take and I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.